Good morning. We welcome all of you to Christ the King Parish this morning, and thank you for being here as we gather to remember and to celebrate the life of Nicole Ballou, giving thanks to God for her and praying that she now be in God's eternal peace. So as we begin our liturgy, please stand. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to Christ the King Church this morning to celebrate together the new, the eternal life that God bestows upon our sister Nicole. We want God to open the doors of paradise unto our sister. We want God to remember the wonderful person that she was and to welcome him to the joys of heaven. As with great faith in our hearts, gratitude for her life, let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Father of mercies, the God of all consolation, be with you all. In the waters of baptism, our, our sister died with Christ and rose with him to new life may she now share with him eternal glory. At this time, we place the pall on the casket, a sign of the new and eternal life that God bestows upon our sister. The ashes can step back. You can go back to your places here. Yeah. Ashes. At this time, we would like to play some Christian symbols, symbols of our faith. The first one is the crucifix. Jesus died on the cross for us. We pray that the redemption that Jesus attained for all of us be afforded to our sister, Nicole. The second gift, the book of the Gospels. Nicole was very consistent, regular at Mass, listened to the Word of God always. She followed the Gospel of Christ. May the Word of God bring her to everlasting life. The next symbol is an image of Mary. Nicole's first name was Marie. Mary was part of her name and who she was as a follower. We pray that our Blessed Mother Mary may intercede for our sister.
Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is a certain faith that your Son who died on the cross was raised from the dead. The first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant who has gone to her rest in Christ may share in the joy of his resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We shall now listen to sacred scripture. We begin with our first reading. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. She is clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs at the days to come. She opens her mouth in wisdom, and on her tongue is kindly counsel. Her children rise up and praise her. Her husband, too, extols her. Many are the women of proven worth, but you have excelled them all. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me, he refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I feel no evil, for you are on my side. With your rod and your staff, they give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spray the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of the St. Paul to the Corinthians, from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. Love is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but it rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus arrived in Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God would give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Once again, I'd like to welcome you to these prayerful moments. I want to thank you for your understanding. There's lots going on in our parking lots. And so thank you for uh, being very patient with us. Years ago, 20 years ago, I was in Fremont. And I used to visit this French lady. She was turning a hundred years. And she beautiful convalescent home and every time I went to see her and we used to do a mass in that convalescent home every month she would be surrounded by her family and friends and she would always ask me father why is the Lord keeping me so long she was 100 going and I said, listen, you should be the last one to talk like that. Because good health and family, so your kids are all here with you all the time. You're blessed. And then she told me, person, you don't understand. You're too young. And I was young then, much younger. She said, all my friends and family have died and gone to heaven. And they will think I never made it. Well, it's not the same story here, but I think the f fact about family and friends is so true. Nicole was an amazing woman, a woman who was always in awe. I mean, something beautiful happened, something new or she hears a good sermon, she would walk up to me, just the jaws open. Wow. She would say, what did Father Brian say? Wow. That was Nicole. When, for Easter, when we put up this decoration, it's not huge, it's very simple. She, as I went around, to say hello, she looked at it then. Wow. It's something that you and I miss in life. The sense of awe. The sense of awe before the majesty of God. The sense of awe before the beautiful things that we see and touch and hear every day. 
That's what makes people happy and joyful, not complaining. Because there's so much to take in the blessings that God has given. That comes from a simplicity of heart. Now Joseph and Nicole met when they were young. They grew up on the same streets and uh, they knew each other as teenagers. Joseph told me she was so beautiful, amazing. It's very, it was very hard not to look at her. And, and then Joseph went on to work but he promised her he will always come back because he worked for Air France. And you know, when you work for Air France, for any airlines, your benefits. And so he would come, kept his promise, would come and see her often. On his fourth visit, he had to meet your future father in law. And uh, Joseph was very well dressed with suit and coat, and that was good enough for his father in law. That's it. Um, that good conversation. They got married eventually, 1962. Natalie, two years later, Pierre, and they formed this beautiful family. A lot of traveling. Took them to London, to Montreal, to Alaska, and then to San Francisco. Joseph ran Air France enterprise for the western part of the United States. I'd like to take an image from there. When I was a kid, when I had never flown until I was, my first flight was probably when I was in my mid-twenties or early thirties. But when I was a kid, I would always go to the backyard and then Look at the flights that go over my house. The, the airport was probably less than 15 miles away. And we could see the color and me and my siblings would say what airlines it is. And it was very exciting for us. You know, we look walking, we were watching, and at some point the aircraft disappears, but it's not gone. It safely lands somewhere. For me, it's gone into the horizon, but they have a safe, safe landing, and people have beautiful reunion, met families, and life begins with excitement. That's life and death. To us today, it would look as if Nicole is gone into the horizon. But remember, she has a safe landing. Heaven. This new excitement, family, friends, the excitement of going to God's house, this new joy of being with God and with our loved ones who have gone before us. And that's life and death for us. I don't know if many of you know Joseph and Nicole they were very special to all of us priests um, because Joseph and Nicole prepared food for us every Saturday evening and we would wait for that. Um, when Joseph comes on Saturday morning and your father, um, Jerry Moran, is there, he would say to me, when he see me, Joseph was here this morning to take plates, means good dinner. <laughs> um, 
And that's true. They, they served us for many years. During the pandemic, during no matter what, always there. Now, you can also remember, you know, if Joseph asked me for anything, even half the church, I would give it to him. Um, but not Joseph and Nicole, never. Never asked for any privilege. Even if I told Joseph, you know, I'll do this for you. No, no, that's okay. Very unassuming folks. And Nicole was this exemplification of simplicity and humility as a person herself. As you heard in the first reading of today, many are the women of proven worth, but she has excelled them all. When she was young, she was beautiful. As she grew older, that beauty only grew as a beautiful soul. Beautiful soul, beautiful heart. I want to end with the gospel of today. Jesus visited Martha and Mary. Martha was the outspoken one. She told Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, Lazarus. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Sometimes you and I, we have similar questions to God. Why? And then Jesus leads Martha from there to this amazing faith. Jesus tells her, do you know that she will he will rise again? And Martha says, I know in the resurrection on the last day. And then Jesus does this amazing miracle. Lazarus is brought back to life. And Martha sees this amazing miracle and then Martha goes a step forward. She says, you are the Christ. You are the Christ, the Son of God. That's faith. That's faith. Faith for us is not a precept. It's not the commandments. It's not what we do every day. It's a person. It's a person of Jesus Christ. That's to whom that we surrender our life, our sense of commitment. If you and I surrender to God, surrender to Jesus, then then his will becomes our will. There would be no problem for us to accept the challenges and difficulties of life. And that's where she was on that day. And Martha has very often reminded me about Nicole herself. A woman of simplicity, humility, but great sense of heart, great hospitality, just like her. But then, a woman of great faith. And so to you, Joseph, you are fortunate to have her so many years. Pierre and Natalie and Dominic and all of you, you're blessed with an amazing woman. And so as we come together today, there's only one sense in our lives, sense of gratitude. Sense of gratitude for her life, for who she was. She was a positive woman, always positive. And I have this in my life and in my mind that I follow Keep negative people in your prayers, positive people in your life. That was she. And so let's continue with our prayer. Let's ask God to open the doors of paradise and to her. And to you and to all of us, we pray for comfort. We pray for peace. Amen. Amen.
Let's all stand for the prayers of the faithful. God, our Father, we trust in you. You're loving, you're forgiving, you're merciful. With hearts full of love, we present to you our petitions. Okay. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family of Nicole, my husband Joseph, their children, Natalie and Pierre, son-in-law, Rob, and much-loved grandson, Dominique, that they may be healed in their sorrow and comforted in their grief, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that in the midst of our sorrow, we may find healing in Christ, who gives light in times of darkness and faith in times of doubt, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be comforted in the knowledge that you, Lord, have received Nicole into the home you have prepared for her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Stay in place while Father prays the God, our loving prayer. Father, <laughs> God, our loving Father, we thank you for listening to our prayer. We ask you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us in Nicole. Receive our sister into the arms of joy. And to us, family, friends, give us comfort. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Precious sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, we beseech you, mercy, that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just 
our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. In Christ, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, Lord, for your faithful people, life is changed, not entered. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Dear friends, we come to an important moment in this celebration when the bread and wine that we offer become Jesus' body and blood. These are sacred moments. Uh, at this time, I see, and many of you are, you know, at that age. So why don't I ask all of you to be seated for this part of the service so that we can give our undivided attention to this moment. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with the Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Nicole, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints of please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Dear friend, Jesus taught us to call God Father. God is now a father unto our sister Nicole. And so with deep affection for our God, let us now pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Let's prepare ourselves for communion as we pray. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Dear friends, this is communion time, and I'd like to invite you all for Holy Communion. If you're not a Catholic, you're more than welcome to come forward. If you're not a Catholic, just place your hands, and we will give you a very special blessing. Just want you to remember, this is not the time to wish the family. We can do that after Mass, but if you come Come in silence and receive communion or a blessing and go back in silence and spend some intimate moments of prayer.
Almighty God, we thank you for our communion. We thank you for your presence in our midst, in our hearts. We thank you for dying for us, for saving us. We pray that our celebration this morning, our prayer may lead our sister into everlasting life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we have words of remembrance from the family. So, Robert and Kathy. Well, I never thought I'd be up here today in front of you all. Life is sure full of surprises. And whether they are good or bad, changes in life like this bring people together. I want to thank you all for being here with us and for your support during the time. Although our family should be in France right now vacationing and spending time with cousins, I am with a heavy heart honored to be here celebrating the life of Nicole, a loving wife for 57 years, a loving mother, a very loving grandmother, a sister, an aunt, and my mother and my loving mother-in-law for 25 years. I have to say that I fell in love with Natalie soon after I met her. We dated for almost a year before we got serious. And then it was time to meet the parents. I met Percy and Nicole at Fleur de Lis, a great French restaurant, of course, in San Francisco. They say, if you want to see what your girlfriend will be like in 20 years, look at her mother. Well, I was very happy and fortunate. Nicole was a beautiful person inside and out. She had a special charm about her. She was classy, and her presence always left a warmth in my heart. Dominic, if I can give you one piece of advice, it is this. When you get married, you marry the family as well. And the mother-in-law is pivotal. I did get very lucky. Your Mimi, or grandma in French, was one of the sweetest, sweetest persons I have known. Everyone who met her loved her. She loved watching you grow up loved watching you on the soccer and baseball field, loved watching you on the basketball or tennis court, and also loved watching you play the piano. She was your biggest cheerleader. In fact, just two weeks ago, at our, our Memorial Day barbecue, she took me aside and said, I have to tell you, I really think he's a genius. <laughs> Then she leans over to me and whispers, you have a very handsome boy, and I really mean it. Yes, your Mimi was your biggest cheerleader. I think Nicole's greatest treasure was her family, and her special prize was Dominic. She always told me how lucky she was to have a normal and loving family all close by, and she never took it for granted. Sometimes a very small gesture can make a big impact, and I am always moved by this. Ever since we would drive over to Nicole and Percy's, when we would leave, they would both come outside the house and wave us off while we drove away. It always made an impression on me, because I can remember as a child when my family visited my grandparents in Vallejo, 
They would also come outside and watch us drive off while waving. That gesture of love always impacts me. One of the last vacations we took together was when we celebrated Nicole's birthday down in Cabo San Lucas. We all decided to have lunch at The Office, a great name for a bar and restaurant right on the beach. Well, after a few margaritas, we were all feeling pretty good, and somehow Nicole went missing. Where is Nicole? After about 10 minutes looking for her, we all went over to the water, and there she was laughing while floating and having a great time with not a care in the world. She was in heaven that day. Nicole, I love you and thank you for bringing Natalie into the world. I will always raise a glass of Sauvignon Blanc with one ice cube and think of you. Hello, my name is Christina File, and I'm not on the program, but I'm so grateful to have an opportunity to share some remembrances of the beautiful mom, Nicole. Nicole came into my life 43 years ago uh, when I had the privilege of meeting Natalie as an eighth grader in Anchorage, Alaska. And uh, we've had so many wonderful memories together. Natalie's part of a tribe of women. There were 11 of us, now there are 10, but Natalie is never alone, and it's been such a privilege to be her friend. While Nicole was mom to Natalie and Pierre, there's a large contingency of friends that also felt her motherly love. Universally, those friends would describe her as exceedingly warm and open, and with each visit, she was so genuinely happy to see you. Every time we got together, it was like a party. She was Natalie's classy mom that worked at Nordstrom's. And a few of us, myself included, worked at Nordstrom's with her, and we felt so lucky and privileged to be able to spend time with Natalie's mom. Additionally, Nicole was sought after for advice on style by all of our mothers that we grew up with. And there was a point where she became Nicole versus Mrs. Ballou. But during high school, Nicole and Percy were part of a group of strict parents, Connie and I included, and uh, that's because we had parents that had that European flair. This group of parents would check in with each other when plans were made because we couldn't use the excuse, oh, I'm sleeping at her house. It was a useless excuse for trouble. Knowing this, Natalie's high school toga party was an amazing delight and remembered to this day. At this party, there were shenanigans that were held by this group of teenagers, and we thought we were getting away with things under the watchful eye of Pierre, of Percy and Nicole. However, as we've learned as adults, they admitted to knowing the truth, and a result, we've had some incredibly hilarious conversations as we've gotten together as girlfriend groups and family. As relationships evolve from adult to child, Nicole's love as a mom will endure all of those that had the privilege of knowing her. She treasured her role as grand mère, as Rob so lovely said, and Dominic, you were the apple of her eye, and she loved watching you as a mom, Natalie. It was her greatest joy. She was just simply a delight, and she will be missed. And Nicole, I promise you, we will have Natalie's back for her whole life because we love her and we love your family so very, very much. Um, I want to also echo what Rob said in terms of thanking all of you for coming to be here for Percy and Pierre and Natalie, Rob and Dominic, and pay your respects to Nicole. Um, my name is Kathy Frostad. 
Back in our freshman year of college, I claimed Natalie, and that's where our adventure started. She's been my steadfast be best friend through thick and thin, and it feels very good and fortunate to be up here today to share a little bit about Nicole as a mother to Pierre and Natalie. I guess they deemed I was qualified to do this because Nicole would refer to me as her blonde daughter. <laughs> um, and uh, I felt um, a lot of warmth in, in hearing that throughout the years. You know, motherhood is a state of mind, a perpetual state of mind. It involves a depth of caring that I swear is at the cellular level. You know, in Alaska, they ha there's this saying, and it goes something like this, never ever get in between a mama bear and her cubs. Incidentally, the same thing applies to moose. Um, but <laughs> anyway, Nicole was a mama bear who had an abundance of unconditional love that had no end for her prized children. From the moment Nicole and Percy welcomed Natalie and later two years Pierre into this world, it was always about being completely overwhelmed in the best possible way by love, joy, responsibility, and selflessness. For Nicole, for almost every mom, it's about decades of worry. Yep, that's why we have to spend so much money on hair, hair stuff, right? It's those gray hairs. You worry, always. You worry where your children remember what you've taught them initially to just keep them safe and later to go into adulthood as confident, kind, respectful, and generous to those in need, especially family. But the worry doesn't ever end. And over the decades, every time I would visit, Nicole would tell me her latest worry about Natalie and ask a bazillion questions. I remember when Natalie and I were just entering college, Nicole pulled me aside. Kathy, oh my God, she'd say. I, and proceeded to tell me how worried she was for Natalie going out to college parties. So I'm 18, right? And I'm hearing this for the first time. And frankly, I'm thinking to myself, this is interesting. For Nicole, is a, she's a, this is this French mother's perspective. Because I happen to know that her daughter was allowed to roam all over Europe with just a backpack and herself. And she's worried about going, Natalie going to a University of Anchorage, Alaska college party. <laughs> For goodness sakes, that starter college was devoid of spirit. And li the library was literally considered the social scene. Anyway, here's Nicole on worry alert, always thinking about anything that could harm her two children. And somehow she bestows this Catholic guilt on me. You know, I'm a Scandinavian Lutheran, you know, part-time. <laughs> but she very much bestowed on me a sense of duty to protect her daughter and bring her home by midnight and not a minute late. Thank you very much. She was good. And I was determined to not let her down. And in that deputized role, I quickly learned too that I had to start earlier in the evening because that midnight curfew would come around real quickly and by 11.30, I couldn't find Natalie. <laughs> she was just having too much fun and she'd hide from me. And then I'd be worried that I wasn't gonna get her home on time. And then I was worried I was gonna get the lecture along with Natalie. <laughs> Pierre, last night um, when we were in the rectory, um, visiting, having a very nice visit with you three, 
you got up from your chair and you went to the table and you grabbed a napkin and you crossed the, walk, the room and you handed it to me. And that, <laughs> that made me, I just couldn't help but smile because that act is like 110% what your mom ingrained in you as a host. Anyone who's ever stayed with Percy and Nicole know of their generosity and their love of entertaining. Oh, and the food, right? Beautiful salmon, wine, cheese, more wine, and lots of laughter. And Pierre, I swear it's true, your mom did this impeccable training that somehow you all would be apologizing if within five minutes of a guest coming into the house, if you didn't have your towels, your guest towels all presented to you, they were all just apologizing. <laughs> she had you all so trained. See, I feel it's okay to laugh in honoring and remembering Nicole because she loved to laugh so much herself. She was pretty funny, too. But... I also loved how when we were all together, and sitting and eating and drinking and laughing, there would always be a sparkle in her eye. And it was as if inside her heart was appraising the whole scene and smiling to herself how lucky, how blessed, and how fortunate and content she was to be surrounded by family and friends. So Percy and Pierre and Natalie, I've seen that same sparkle in your eyes too, and I hope it doesn't, in your grief, get tucked away forever. I hope all three of you honor Nicole and keep her sparkle alive once again, finding laughter, joy, contentment, surrounded by family and friends, and in doing so, perpetually remember her presence forever. Thank you for those beautiful words. One is now after this celebration, there is a reception uh, set by the family. It's in our parish hall. And so, because there's works going on, when you leave the church, right on your right is our gym, and the gym doors are open. Get into those doors, and then you are right in the parish hall. So that's the best way to go to the reception, and on behalf of Joseph, I invite all of you, you know, they're a, they're a family of hospitality. It would mean a lot to them if you're all there. So, that's okay, Joseph. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May a farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. When we shall joyfully greet her again, when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. At this time we will pay homage to her mortal remains as the incense rises up to the skies let our prayer rise to the Father in heaven. And so I'd like to invite you to stand.
into your hands, Father of mercies. We come and ask this in Nicole in the Shua and set in hope. Together with all who have died, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings which you bestowed upon our sister in this life. Merciful Lord, tend toward us and listen to our prayer. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with the faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May the angels lead our sister into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome her into the new and eternal Jerusalem. And may the blessings of Almighty God come down upon us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.